So the party of so-called small government and freedom is proven that the terms are conditional at best. Check out this headline, Iowa GOP wants to limit SNAP, SNAP food list. Here's how it could impact the most vulnerable communities. Now in the midst of a raging global pandemic, the pandemic is not over, the suffering is not over. Again, those people who are already suffering before this pandemic caught hold of all of us in this world. There were people, our people suffering socially, economically and politically and the pandemic just simply exacerbated or exposed that suffering, that deep seated suffering. And so when you got folks like these Iowa Republicans who should be doing more to edify, to lift, to change material conditions, but then they go and try to pick on the most vulnerable people in our community by slapping on rules for how folks who receive SNAP benefits can spend those benefits, what type of food they can buy. And there are nearly 40 House Republicans that have co-sponsored this bill. And this bill also targets Medicaid and other public assistance benefits. So Iowa House Republicans drafted file three this month. A bill that proposes strict limitations on what food item SNAP a recipient could use their benefits to buy, including white bread, fresh meat, and sliced cheese. Many believe the new bill would inflict unnecessary financial strain on Iowa's most vulnerable communities. Further, the bill, which almost 40 Republicans co-sponsored would require SNAP recipients to have a more restrictive list of food items they can buy that would mirror the foods approved for the state's current women, infant and children program. It would also require an asset limit on SNAP participants and Medicare recipients would need to work at least 20 hours a week to receive benefits. Uh, Something wrong with these folks, Jessica. Yeah, I think my first indication that uh, the economic system was rigged was, you know, my father's a carpenter. He builds homes with his own two hands. But during the financial crisis, of course, so many people were at risk of losing their homes, myself included. And that's because of what the banks were doing. In Iowa, with their own two hands, many people are responsible for feeding the rest of the country, for growing the food, for packing the meat. And for these people to be paid way less than the value of that labor to feed so many people with the work they do for hours and hours every single week. And then to not be able to have access to the food that they help provide to others, it doesn't make sense. It's backwards, they should absolutely have access to the food they need. There's no reason that they can't, that's a good reason, right? So of course the reason they wanna limit this is because it's a lot easier to exploit people who are hungry, who are willing to do whatever work possible to make the money they need to, to feed their families. That's exactly what's at play here. Exactly what's at play. And you know the House uh, File Three is getting substantial pushback, as well it should, from state Democrats and hunger advocacy groups who argue that the bill will negatively affect those that are struggling to keep up with the rising cost of food and still reeling from inflation and job loss. As you were, we were just talking about Jessica, uh, brought by the pandemic. And then we have the chair of the Iowa Hunger Coalition weighing in, Luke Elzinga. And he said the following to Time Magazine. I've been telling legislators in the state of Iowa, we have food banks and food pantries that are breaking records in terms of the number of people that are turning to them for assistance. At the same time, the number of Iowans enrolled in SNAP is actually at a 14 year low. And then here's the breakdown, we want you to see it and also hear it, I'll read it. Of the asinine restrictions being proposed by file three, no white grains, no baked, refined or chili beans, no fresh meat, no sliced cube or crumbled cheese. That reporting coming from Axios, again, you have legislators Uh, Primarily those who consider themselves part of a freedom coalition, the GOP government, get your hands off all types of my stuff. Except for when it comes to a woman's womb and now what poor people are allowed to buy in Iowa. Yeah, that party has decided to attempt to legislate 
what recipients of SNAP can buy to feed their families as if Poorer people are not entitled to being able to buy exactly what they want to buy and exactly what they want to eat. This is classism indeed, no doubt about it. And just really trying to crush people who are already in vulnerable positions. Shame on each and every one of these Republicans. Shame on them for doing this and I did, I, it is my sincere hope that this bill does not pass and that the masses in Iowa rise up and that Democrats rise up and put the requisite emotion that needs to be displayed about this bill and how it is coming for and hurting vulnerable populations. You know, Jessica, when I was in the legislature, one of my colleagues in the Senate had decided to introduce like almost a similar bill, it was a bill. He wanted to have welfare recipients drug tested. And I went to his office to explain to him how exploitive that was, how it was already exacerbating the pain that poor people already feel. And and then I began to tell my story, you know, that I come from a safety net family, and that had it not been for that safety net, there were many times where my siblings and I would not have had food to eat. And he told me that his the mem that the his constituents wanted this bill, as if his constituents are coming to public meetings saying, please, 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 drug tests. Uh, folks who receive public assistance because we know that they 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 gotta be, uh, uh, you know, they they have to be. Uh, the ones who are scrutinized more than anybody else. And we know that they disproportionately abuse drugs more than anybody else. So he wouldn't listen to reason, Jessica. So I said, you know what, just as you introduce a bill, I will introduce one of my own. And I introduced a bill in the Ohio Senate to drug test members of the legislature regularly and randomly. Because if the premise is you wanna protect the taxpayers dollars, well, we derive our salary from the taxpayers. So if you want to protect their dollars, then we need to be the first in line to be drug tested. That sounds fair to me. It's ridiculous that it's the same members of the GOP that spread this narrative that if you need to be on welfare, you're you're getting a handout and you're lazy. When corporations like Walmart give step by step instructions for their new employees how to get on SNAP benefits because despite them working over 40 hours per week, they're not paying them enough to feed themselves. And they qualify for government assistance when it comes to SNAP benefits, which are commonly called food stamps, right? That narrative cannot be combated with the typical neoliberal narratives. You have to explain to people that in fact, the work you've done is worth far more than they're paying you. And they're essentially stealing from you by them getting so many tax breaks and not paying into these systems and also not paying you enough to feed yourselves when they're making billions of dollars in profit. It's ridiculous. That is exactly right. We subsidize companies like Walmart. We are subsidizing them because they're workers and there are other companies who fit that exact criteria, Jessica, and I'm so glad that you brought that up. Now, my colleague in the Ohio House at the time, Representative Hagan, took that bill one step further and he added CEOs of companies to that. I thought you'd get a kick out of that. So <laughs> not only members of the legislature should be drug tested randomly and regularly, CEOs of companies that receive tax subsidies should be drug tested as well. We were making a point and we were using the bully pulpit to do so. And I hope that the members of the legislature in Iowa, the ones that know how horrible file three is, will stand up and fight to, to number one, make sure that this bill never sees the light of day. And secondly, use their bully pulpit to draw the distinction and, and, and make it plain about what this really is. It is exploitation and hate of poor people in this country. And it really is a moral and it is more than a shame.